Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and part 2 of the Argon 1 V3 NVMe case for the Raspberry Pi 5 and in this video we're going to be assembling it, testing it, getting the NVMe working and putting a operating system onto the NVMe. So let's see how simple this is going to be because I remember from doing the previous one it was a bit tricky hopefully this is going to be a lot easier so let's get on to it so here we have my raspberry pi 5 the 8 gigabyte version so there should be plenty of power there within this small computer and it's um, fantastic how far these raspberry pis have come along now from the original ones that come out with just a measly 512 megabytes of memory these things are now really really powerful you can do some fantastic things with them so let's get all the parts out see what parts we need so there's all our bits on the desk so i think first we will install the heat transfer pads onto the parts onto the case so the heat from the SOC and the main power management IC can be transferred into the metalwork. And there's a fan there for when it runs, um, when it gets too hot, should we say. But that's going to be control of, controllable from software which you can install that allows you to set temperature thresholds. So we'll put the heat transfer material onto the points as such it's a little bit fiddly to get this plastic coating off and do not forget to take the plastic coating off okay so the raspberry pi will fit down like that so the next thing is to put this daughter board onto the raspberry pi now for me this is a little bit fiddly and there's definitely room for this to break if you're not careful especially if you're a bit heavy-handed and that board uh, the daughter board bends i think there's a possibility of breaking them but if you're careful keep it flat apply even pressure it should be okay but just push it up as far as you can go make sure it's level and you can see it's in position because the daughter board won't go any further than the Ethernet port. So we need to install our ribbon cable for the NVMe bay. So it's as simple as this, making sure the copper side faces towards the white part of the plug. Putting it in place and pushing down the locking mechanism to lock it into place. And now we can place our Raspberry Pi into the case. So we'll line it up with the uh, GPO expansion as such. Give it a gentle push down. Now if everything's lined up correctly, all the sockets on the back should be nicely in position. So we'll gently push that down and we'll gently push down the pins for the daughter board. And you can see everything's lined up on the back so that's a good alignment it shows that everything's plugged in correctly so that's how we would connect our nvme up but we're not going to connect the nvme nvme up just yet because we, we need to put an operating system onto an sd card but we're going to prepare the nvme drive in the case anyway so we'll take out the retention screw and there's our Kaoxia one terabyte drive. Should be nice and fast. So putting it into the M2 socket at an angle, pushing it into place, and then getting the retention screw and pushing the drive down and then putting the retention screw into place. That's all it takes to hold the drive into place so now our thermal transfer material 
So again, don't forget to take off the plastic on the outside. A little bit fiddly, but it does come. So take it off and then just lay the heat transfer material on top of your drive. As such. And once it's in place, we can now put the metal heat spreader back onto the top. So we'll make sure it's in the correct orientation, so the lines line up. And it just sits on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently put the screws in one by one, and then we're going to tighten them up once we've put all the screws in. I don't want to put any unnecessary pressure onto that NVMe drive. I want everything to go down nice and equally and uniform. So once we've done that, we can tighten up all the screws. Don't have to be over tightened. Just finger tight is good enough. And there's our NVMe drive installed. So last thing we need to put the two screws that hold the Raspberry Pi and its daughter board in place. So there's one screw in the top and there's one screw in this bottom corner. Those will hold those boards into place. Just like that. So everything should be nice and secure now. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to unbox our USB-C power supply for this so a genuine Raspberry Pi approved 27 watt USB supply should be more than enough power so we're going to make a operating system on an SD card so we selected Raspberry Pi 5 we're gonna have the 64-bit OS because we've got a 64-bit SOC so we'll select the 64-bit operating system and choose storage there's our USB SD card so it's going to take a few minutes to write and it's going to take a minute or so to verify so just let that complete do its business and now we can remove the SD card from the reader so we'll do that and we'll install it into the Raspberry Pi. So it just slots in as such. Now we're not going to connect up the NV NVMe just yet. Because we need to make sure that this installation works first. So we'll connect up the power. Connect up our HDMI. And fingers crossed we press the power button the light comes on on the front HDMI signal on the monitor apologies I've not got proper screen capture so this is just a camera in front of the screen but as you can see we've come to the Raspberry Pi desktop setup so we're just going to follow all the steps that it requires And also it's given us our IP address there, so we can use that should we need to remote in. So let's just make sure that all our settings are correct. Now it's asking you to create a user, and it will not allow you to go past the step, so make a user, make a password. And then connect to a wireless network, so connect to the, your favourite wireless network that you have at your home. And once that's done, we should be ready to go. So, allows you to select a browser. Okay, it was like Firefox, so we're going to select Firefox. We'll just wait for it to update, and there's our Raspberry Pi desktop. And um, feeling very snappy as well even though it's just on the SD card it does feel very snappy so to allow remote access to this we're going to have to turn on SSH and we're going to turn on VNC 
just make sure all the other settings are okay we'll click OK update the configuration and now we should be able to remote in with VNC so now we've done this we can now connect up the NVMe so again the copper sides to the white part undo the retention clamp slide the cable in now I presume we have to close this because of the pogo pins that supply voltage so we're going to do it anyway so we'll just temporarily close it up for now let's put a couple of screws in just to hold it into place just like that and we're going to put the rubber feet on whilst we're at it so it doesn't slide all over the desk so we'll place our rubber feet just like this now we are going to be taking out the SD card once this is done so as you can see we're on VNC so we need to go to the disk imager now we need to select the raspberry pi we need to select the os and as you can see there's our kioxia terabyte ssd so we'll select that as the target device you can do edit settings but i find that it doesn't work very well so it allows you to put some bits and pieces in there and we'll click on yes it's asking our for our admin password which is a password you just created with the user so we'll put that in and now it's going to write the operating system to our drive so once it's completed we can close this and we can shut down the raspberry pi again so I'll take the bottom back off now remove the SD card and hopefully we should be booting from the NVMe so we're not going to be needing the SD card anymore so we'll put it all back together put some screws in power up and again we're on with the desktop switch on VNC again for remote access you don't have to do this if you're doing it as a desktop machine but I I like to use these without monitors so VNC is perfect for me so we're on VNC open up a terminal type in DF for disk free or drive free and you can see under our primary drive we have a whopping 900 odd gigabytes of space fantastic so I've loaded up webmin my favorite back-end software as you can see there's the details and there we have our Keoxia drive correctly spaced it's using the full space of the drive absolutely fantastic so this webmin software allows you to change stuff also monitor stuff very handy so yeah everything seems to be working and that was quite painless on how to get this working so fantastic that was nice and easy and yeah very impressed so hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like share subscribe comment thanks for watching we'll see you in another video